Today, I would like to guide you into understanding the structures of both the Old Testament and the first part of Genesis from chapter 1 to 11. First, let's have a look at the subtitle. Can anyone guess what the relationship between creation and destruction is? It is a repeating cycle of someone creating something and another destroying it. Who is that someone? Yes, it is the Lord himself that created these things and man who destroyed them. Can you guess what happens next? God always restored what man destroyed. Now, why did God restore everything? It is simply because God loves us, his creation. This is the story of God and his dealings with his people. He always has done, is doing, and will continue to do until Jesus' second coming. This is the main theme of this class. Please keep in mind the cycle of creation, destruction, and love. Before we start to look into each book of the Old Testament in detail, I would like for you to understand the structure of the Old Testament first. I presume that some seniors have already taken a few classes on the Old Testament. There are various theological views of the Old Testament structure. However, in this class, we will be concentrating on the frame of each book of the Bible. The other theologies can be taught in other classes or from various websites. Today, we are going to take a little different approach to the structure of the Old Testament based on the flow of the story about the journey of God and his people. There are many different versions of the process of Israel's history, and although the names of ages may differ, the baseline is very similar. This is my version, and it does not include the creation age. It begins with the little age, and of course, the word leader defines the head of the family or a clan, in a wider concept. Please follow these ages, keeping in mind the history of Israel. Which age came after the leader age? Desert, then conquest. Conquest where? Canaan, the promised land given by the Lord. Now can anyone guess what comes next? There was a period in which the Israelites did not have a strong leader such as Moses and Joshua. Many of the leaders were from the distributed tribes. This is called the tribe age. After this, they had finally gotten a king just like any of the other countries. Who were they? Saul, then David, and then Solomon. They were great kings, but they also made big mistakes before the Lord. In consequence to their mistakes, God separated Israel into two countries, northern Israel and Judah in the south. Both countries had their own kings. In Judah, only the descendants of David inherited the crown, whereas Israel had several kingdoms from different tribes. This is called the Division Age. When all the kings of every kingdom in Israel committed idolatry incurred by Jeroboam, the first king of Israel, God abandoned Israel using Assyria in BC 722. Then, in BC 586, God also disowned Judah for its sins and this time Babylon was used. The survivors from Judah were brought to Babylon as captives. This is called the Captive Age. During the Captive Age, the Lord tried to teach his people through the prophet Ezekiel, and after some time God called Zechariah and Nehemiah to rebuild his temple 
and the walls of Jerusalem. He then called another prophet, Ezra, to preach his words. It was a successful start, but was short-lived when the people started to commit serious sins once again and complained to the Lord as stated in the book of Malachi. Hence, the Lord decided to abandon his people for a long time without any interactions with them until after Jesus' coming, almost 400 years later. This is called the Silence Age. These nine ages are the backbone of the Old Testament structure. Don't try to memorize the older, just understand it and keep it in mind when studying the flow of the historical events. Then you can easily recall these events anytime. Now let us move on to a different level of flow of ages by looking at the leaders of each age. First, during the Little Age, there wasn't a big congregation like a country, which is why it could not be called a country. It consisted of just Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. They were the leaders of their family in that age. In the next age, the Desert Age, the Israelites wandered the deserts for about 39 years in consequence to their disobedience to the Lord. At the time, Moses was their great leader. Then, in the conquest age, Joshua was their leader who was followed by many other leaders called judges. Moses and Joshua were also named judge, even though they had multidisciplinary roles they were called the United Judges, in contrast to the state judging from several trials later. A total of around 42 to 43 kings ruled during the Kingdom Age and the Division Age. The first three kings of the Kingdom Age were called the Soul Kings because they were the only kings in that age in Israel and there were two kings in the division age in both the north and the south. There were no more kings after the destruction of Judah in BC 586. Instead, the Lord called his prophets to convey his messages. Of course, many prophets were called on previous to the destruction too, Isaiah, Jeremiah, etc. Daniel and Ezekiel played major roles in the captive age. Then Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, and Zechariah were called on in the return age. In those days, the prophets were the leaders of Israel. Then there were no more prophets during the silence age after their disobedience and complaint to the Lord. This continued for about 400 years until Jesus' coming. Who is Jesus? He came to us as the mediator between the Lord and us, as stated in the book of Hebrew, chapter 9, verse 15. Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. Later on, after his ascent into the heavens, the Father sent another. Who is he? The Holy Spirit. Please open your Bible to the book of John, chapter 14, verse 16. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. What does the passage tell us? That the counselor will be with us now and forever. Who is with us today? The Holy Spirit is with us. Who will be with our children, the Holy Spirit? Now, let's count the number of types of leaders. How many? Seven. There were a total of seven kinds of leader over the ages. Remember, seven is God's number. Is this a coincidence? 
Well, we do not know for sure whether it is or not. And this was just to follow your reference. You should not be keen on it. There were a series of special events which were a turning point from one leadership to another, from leader to united judging in reference to Exodus and Mount Sinai, Israelites moved from Egypt to Mount Sinai and received the law from the Lord. What is the main role of a judge? It is the judgment in court. By what? By the law. Right? Since the people received the law, they needed a judge to exercise it and put it into action for the congregation. So the judge was called, of course, at the time, Moses and Joshua were the multidisciplinary leaders. However, their biggest responsibility was to practice the law into their everyday lives. Who was the last judge? It was Samuel. He was a great judge, but he too made a mistake, the mistake of improperly educating his children. Because of his children's behavior, the people wanted to get an ordinary king like the other countries had. Of course, it can't be said that this was the only reason for it. But it is just one of the causes. To me, this seemed like God's providence because of the events that took place shortly before this happened. There was a big spiritual revival movement led by Samuel at Mizpah. He took down all the idols built by the people and purified the people, but later committed sins again. God tried to clean his people with the movement, but they just repeated their sins again and again. This was the reason why God needed to change the form of leadership from judge to king. <clears throat> During the Kingdom Age, an important event was the conquest of Jerusalem carried out by David. What a spiritual meaning does Jerusalem have? Open your Bible to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. Then Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David. It was on the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite, the place provided by David. Yes. Mount Moriah, where is it? What happened on Mount Moriah? Abraham sacrificed the burnt offering with his son Isaac. This was a very important place because God's temple was built there. David conquered it during his time, and Solomon built the temple there. Both of them were abundantly blessed by the Lord, but they too made serious mistakes. Particularly, Solomon, he committed idolatry. So the Lord segregated Israel into two countries and gave Israel to Zeroboam. This was the origin of idolatry in Israel throughout the reign of all twenty kings and Judah as well. The Lord expected the people to repent and return to Him. Even though He showed the way to repent at Nineveh through Jonah, the people did not follow. Near to the end of the division age, the Lord tried again to revive His people through His word without any success. Finally, the Lord decided to destroy Judah and leave the survivors to be brought captive to Babylon. The Lord then brought prophets instead of kings to convey His message to the people. In Babylon, the people were 
educated to renew their faith. Babylon was the place of restoration of the people's faith. Now, I would like to show you the characteristics of each age with the three key words representing themselves. Of course, you may develop your own key words to represent the ages, but for now we will only take these three. Let us take another approach to the ages in terms of the entities required to build a country. These entities are first the people, second the law, and the third the land. This was the covenant given by the Lord to Abraham and his descendants. Then this was followed by God's struggle to maintain his authority with his people. After this, an interesting group of four women came into the picture. Now, what do these four women have an in common? They belong to the genealogy of Jesus, and they are all foreigners. Ruth was from the descendants of Shem, and the rest were from the descendants of Ham, who was cursed by Noah. Now, let's see where we can find these stories in the Bible. Look at the line in red and green, just above the ages line. These are the collection of all the interesting and graceful stories in each age. Genesis talks about the little age, Exodus about the desert age, Joshua about the conquest age, Daniel about the captive age, and finally Malachi about the beginning of the silence age. The history of Israel, God's people, and God's dealings with them are chronically organized in these books. Hence the name, the history book, was given to these books. Here, the first three books are called the Law, Torah, and the books in green color are called the Prophets. In the next line, just below the ages, are the books Leviticus and Deuteronomy, which are included in the desert age without the time span. They play a role in supporting the history books and can also be called the law. Ruth, in the tribe age, the chronicles are also history books, but it explains the stories of the same period of kings with a Jewish perspective. Esther is in the return age without the time span. The next line is about wisdom literature and a few prophets. In the division age, the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah were used, and for the return age, Haggai and Zechariah, who were minor prophets. The lines below show 19 triplets of the Bible. These triplets are the first characters of the keywords used to represent the books. We will go into detail about them later. Prophets started to come later during 2nd Kings chapter 15 and onwards. The main purpose of these prophets was to deliver the messages from God to the people and convey His plans. In Isaiah, God's nation, New Covenant in Jeremiah, restoration of the people in Ezekiel, restoration of God's kingdom in Ezra, the recovery of holiness in Nehemiah, and finally God's calling of return in Zechariah. This is the main outline of the story of prophets. On the top line, the numbers in red are the years in BC given by some biblical scholars. The numbers in blue are the years 
counted by me using the information of the Old Testament starting from the birth of Adam. Now, I would like you all to inscribe this picture in your heart. Many people often argue that the Old Testament is not an essential part of the Bible study for Christians today because Jesus has replaced it all. Is this true? Definitely not. If you cannot understand the Old, Old Testament completely, you will not be able to understand the whole picture of the New Testament. The Old Testament can give us all the records of history in which God dealt with man and give us the evidence to convince ourselves and also teach us the general principle of truth. It also helps us to better understand and appreciate the New Testament stories.